On today's show, tensions between mobility providers and cab drivers boil over in Spain. Mercedes is using x-ray machines to improve the safety of its cars, and how lights can help improve the performance of race car drivers. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Automakers think that mobility services could represent a whole new business for them to get into. They see a big chance to make big money. And that's why we're seeing so much activity in this field. But this has irked taxi drivers, since these services don't have to follow many of the same regulations or pay licensing fees like the cabbies do. And now protests over these new mobility services are getting violent in Spain. Bloomberg reports that nine drivers for the ride-hailing service Cabify have had their cars burned. And over the last 18 months, 70 vehicles in Daimler's car-to-go fleet have been smashed up. And earlier this week, taxi drivers in the country went on strike to protest mobility services not having to pay for cab licenses, which can cost as much as $145,000 in Madrid. And until lawmakers update the mobility services regulations, the tensions between these two sides will likely remain. You know, racers have tried all kinds of tricks to gain a competitive edge, but could it really be as simple as the color of light they're looking at? Lighting supplier Osram has teamed up with BMW Motorsport to provide it with a number of solutions to help drivers and their team stay alert and focused. And they first tested them out at last weekend's Nürburgring 24 hours race because racing at night presents a host of unique challenges. The most intriguing solution is a set of LED glasses. They work by varying color and light brightness, which can help drivers prepare for nighttime driving and allow them to return to optimal performance faster after rest periods. For example, red light helps to regenerate, while white bluish light causes the body to wake up faster and more effectively. Osram also installed special lighting in common areas and the pit wall control center so the rest of the team could feel the positive effects from the lighting. The BMW team that used the lighting solutions fielded two M6 GT3 cars. One finished fourth overall in its class, while the other did not make it to the end. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. I'm sure many a bone is needed to be x-rayed after a car crash, but now Mercedes is flipping the script and turning the x-ray machine on the crash car. It's testing ultra-fast x-ray technology to see how safety-related parts deform during a crash, both internally and externally. The data is then put into a computer to help improve the accuracy of crash simulations. Mercedes is even working towards a day when a digital model of a human body can be used in place of a dummy. Its end goal is to improve the forecasting quality of vehicle crash simulations. You know, many may wonder why this even matters with autonomy on the horizon. But the IIHS predicts there will still be 34,000 traffic deaths in the U.S. in 2024. You know, the customer is always right. Well, Ford is taking that to heart and is launching a limited edition of the Focus RS in America. The automaker took suggestions from current owners and club members, scoured comments and suggestions on enthusiast websites and forums, and even looked at other people's Photoshop renderings. New to the car are red and blue paint colors that come with a gloss black roof and mirror caps. The rear roof spoiler is also gloss black now and features blue RS logos on the side. 19-inch wheels are standard as well. The interior gets carbon fiber on the door handles, handbrake, and boost gauge, and it comes standard with Recaro seats that are heated, and so are the mirrors and steering wheel. And to get the most out of the car, there's a new Quaife limited slip differential for the front axle. It's able to distribute the torque to the front wheels in such a way that the car has better acceleration and stability. 
Only 1,500 limited edition examples of the RS will be made for the U.S. and Canada that will come out later this year. Coming up next, a look at why the investment community isn't sold on automotive technology advancements. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Increased safety standards and stricter fuel economy regulations are forcing automakers to invest billions of dollars to meet targets. Even though automakers have little choice, the investment community is leery about the payoff from all this R&D. On a recent AutoLine this week, we were joined by Wall Street automotive analysts and they explain the investor's point of view. I think the investment community is uncertain and I think that's an another ingredient in what, you know, what, what these, why these stocks are priced and behave the way they do. There's a lot of money being diverted into autonomous cars and various investments and software, et cetera, et cetera. They're staffing up in this whole area. Um, I think that there's a defensive reason why they've done that. They don't want Apple and Google and other Silicon Valley companies to capture whatever incremental fee-based revenue there is off of a car. Uh, they're not going to let what happened with, uh, you know, sort of mapping <laughs> happen again. So I think that that's all good. I think but that's technology that's in the future and no one knows whether it's going to generate the same margins as a car, bigger margins or smaller margins. And we know that technology, you know, needs to be refreshed probably every six months. By the time it's in a car, it's obsolete given the cycle of building a car and the shorter cycle for developing technology. So, you know, I think that there's a lot of unknowns here. We know they need to, to invest. Some of the stuff is very exciting. It's going to, it's undoubtedly some portion of it will generate huge profits for them, but there will also be investments that they're making that will, that will just fail. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, when you look at this, there's kind of two things in the car that are going on right now. It's getting from A to B, and then there's utilizing, you know, the time that people are in their car to, to Create, create incremental streams of revenue. And there's little risk that the automaker is going to be wildly disintermediated in getting people from A to B. They need to do that more efficiently with better powertrains, potentially different kinds of powertrains, and hopefully more expediently through more efficient traffic patterns and maybe higher speed lanes over time. The question is, do they have the gusto and the investment and, and the know-how to really compete with the Apples and the Googles in the world of connecting with the consumer, collecting this data, and utilizing it in a way that really creates value for them in their core business and then also in the time that people are spending in cars. So there's a lot of debate here and where this will land with investors. And to Marion's point, the uncertainty is something that a lot of people in the investment community don't like. And the payoffs are years out. And we're used to seeing product cycles and getting paid you know, further down the line, but there's always something that's new that's creating cash flow to support the future, the future investment. This is just future investment that's coming right, you know, right now for what will be payoffs in the future. And that's something that's tough for investors to really grasp. You can watch that entire discussion right now on Autoline.tv or just look for it on our YouTube channel. And hey, be sure to tune in to Autoline After Hours this afternoon. Our special guest is Brian Pennebecker, a former UAW worker who will discuss the growing popularity of Donald Trump among union members who traditionally have supported Democrats. So this ought to be an interesting show. That's today at 3 p.m. Eastern time on our website, Autoline.tv. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.